Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Saturday. Hope we're having a wonderful start to the weekend and hopefully enjoying some of the nicer weather depending on where you're at out there and also hopefully getting excited about uh, this pattern change on the way that we're going to discuss pretty heavily in today's video uh, as I think that's something a lot of people are going to be uh, you know, excited to hear about after such a very hot, muggy start to summer. There are some signs that relief may just be on the way. Um, now, I will start uh, the video off. I'm sorry if I sound maybe a little hoarse or a little uh, out of it. I think I'm fighting a little bit of laryngitis here, so um, you know, hopefully that doesn't affect the uh, video quality too much for you folks listening. Uh, in fact, maybe it'll just make my voice sound a tad deeper, or maybe it won't sound any different at all. I really don't know. Um, but uh, again, just wanted to mention that at the beginning. Also, uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe and like the video. That does a lot to help the channel out. Again, I've been saying this past couple videos, big goal is 10,000 subscribers here uh, by the end of hurricane season. And again, I really think we can get there, especially once things uh, start picking up big time here going into August, September, and October. Uh, and I have no doubt in my mind that it will be a pretty active hurricane season, uh, you know, and tracking all of that. So again, uh, kind of preparing for that on down the road. But again, big thing in today's video is uh, talking about this pattern change on the way that I'm sure a lot of you, like I said, will be happy to hear about. Um, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump on into things and start talking some weather here. So the big story the past couple days has been all this rain falling along the east coast of the United States, and um, now much of that is slowly working its way offshore. Still some leftover showers along the I-95 corridor, but all things considered much drier. Also, uh, some big storms off the Carolina coast from uh, Myrtle Beach up towards the Wilmington area, seeing uh, some of that just barely scraping the coastline. Now elsewhere, um, this uh, big area of high pressure out west continues to dominate the pattern and is also influencing what will uh, be some rounds of storms through much of the north central part of the country. In fact, already seeing some of that pop up on satellite imagery uh, this afternoon there through portions of Minnesota uh, and uh, kind of surrounding states there through the Dakotas. And, um, you know, Everywhere else, though, things are relatively quiet through the Ohio River Valley, the Mid-South. Uh, again, a pretty normal, nice start to a July uh, day out there, and um, that uh, will probably remain the same for most folks. Um, as, uh, you know, if you're seeing active weather now, it's probably going to stay that way. If you're seeing quiet weather right now, it's also probably going to stay that way throughout the rest of today. Now, taking a look at radar, again, like I said, some showers still impacting the I-95 corridor, really from kind of uh, Richmond up through the Boston area, seeing some of those showers working on through. Also, uh, some showers very close to, uh, close to the Carolina coastline here, especially near Wilmington and portions of the Outer Banks, probably even getting some rain out of that, but uh, relatively dry at the time I'm recording this through uh, the South Carolina coastline, although probably seeing some of those storms off in the distance if you're near the Myrtle Beach area. Now, also seeing some showers and storms here in the heartland of the country from the Kansas City area southbound. Um, again, some of those storms working on through. Also, like I mentioned, storms up in the northern tier of the country, uh, which will be a very common theme through the next couple of days. In fact, we're going to even bump up those storm chances and introduce some severe storm chances uh, throughout the coming days. And we'll talk about that pretty heavily in today's video as well. All right. Uh, watches, warnings, advisories, much more quiet currently than we were looking at a day or two ago. Again, still some small flooding concerns up into portions of coastal New England, uh, from Bridgeport, Connecticut, up through Plymouth and Boston. Uh, again, I could see a little bit of flooding today, but luckily most of those showers and storms are working their way on out, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth here in just a second. Other than that, the big story today is really going to be heat and a couple isolated severe storms, but mainly heat is going to be more of the widespread impact from the Philadelphia area uh, back down through uh, New Orleans, Jackson, Mississippi, and then uh, the heart of the country also really getting in on that heat. Very, um, you know, unfortunate heat indexes today for a lot of folks. Uh, but again, like I said, relief on the way, so make sure you stay till the end of the video to hear about that uh, and uh, just how cool we could get going into... Uh, you know, kind of the end of July. So we'll talk about that later on. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, finish up the discussion on what is um, left to come rainfall wise uh, with this kind of coastal boundary that we've been dealing with the past couple of days. So again, as I mentioned, we'll start with the northeast here. This is where most of the rain is left. It's still some scattered showers and storms, especially along coastal areas from Boston all the way down through the Delmarva. Still seeing some of those showers and storms working on through. 
Uh, and the good news is throughout the day today, those will slowly continue to work offshore. By the time we're getting into this afternoon, uh, you know, drier conditions taking over for the I-95 corridor, although watch out our friends in New England, uh, some kind of back end storms could build here from Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of these are strong to severe. Um, definitely could see some gusty winds, small hail, uh, you know, with some of these storms as they roll on through. So watching out for that this afternoon. Even those, though, eventually move offshore, and by the time we're getting into overnight tonight and into our Sunday morning, much nicer conditions through the northeast uh, and should stay that way through Sunday afternoon, although a couple pop-up storms are very possible through the I-95 corridor. Also going to have to watch for some leftover storms uh, moving through the Midwest. Could try to get into uh, western portions of the northeast. Uh, into our Sunday afternoon, but for the I-95 corridor, much nicer tonight and tomorrow uh, than what you're probably seeing this morning out there. All right, taking a look at the southeast now. Again, still seeing some showers and storms along the coastline. Again, Delmarva all the way down through the Outer Banks, especially probably getting in on some of that rain, uh, and uh, even some showers off the Carolina coastline from the Charleston area northbound. Uh, and uh, that'll be a common theme again throughout the day today. Some showers and storms could once again build on the backside, so don't be surprised to see an afternoon storm from Charleston through Myrtle Beach up through uh, Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Uh, and even a couple showers and stray storms uh, further inland are possible for big cities like Charlotte, Greenville, Spartanburg, Atlanta, Nashville. Uh, nothing really severe expected this afternoon, just kind of your good old-fashioned popcorn afternoon thunderstorms. Uh, during the summertime and then drying out pretty quickly overnight tonight and our Sunday afternoon uh, we introduce once again the chance for some afternoon pop-up storms um, you know some lightning some heavy rainfall could be possible with these but all things considered pretty tame uh, for summertime standards so we'll uh, watch out for that but overall pretty normal summertime pattern all right, let's start talking about this severe weather a little bit now. A slight risk up for much of the northern tier of the country from uh, just outside of the Chicago area up through the Twin Cities, uh, much of the Dakotas, and through Montana as well. Possible to see some strong storms this afternoon. Uh, but I really think the next couple of days, this threat will slowly increase. So this is today, Saturday. Sunday, once again, we'll do it again. Still relatively tame. Uh, but by the time we get into Monday, I think the severe threat is really going to ramp up for some major population centers. Uh, again, Chicago, Gary, Indiana, much of Wisconsin, the Twin Cities, once again, probably on Monday as well. Uh, and even much of uh, Michigan, portions of Ohio as well could get in on some of those severe storms uh, for our Monday afternoon. Now, why are we going to be seeing this? Where is the severe weather coming from? Uh, well, it's actually all kind of originating from a low pressure system up in Canada. Let me back this up to where we're at now for our Saturday afternoon. Uh, what we're going to be watching is this small little blip up into Canada. And funnily enough, this little area of low pressure is going to, one, bring the severe weather, and two, uh, cause our overall pattern change throughout the eastern half of the country uh, getting into next week, especially. Um, so, you know, it's kind of funny how the weather works. I think that's one of the reasons I and many other Others are so fascinated by it, how just one little, uh, you know, area of uh, disturbed weather in one part of the world can really affect what happens on down the line uh, in other parts of the world. So anyway, watch that little area blue, watch what happens. Uh, that low pressure, uh, you know, here at 500 millibars gets stronger and stronger. And eventually, by the time we're getting into Monday afternoon of this coming week, you'll notice uh, we've got a full-out trough here showing up. Again, this is the trough axis here uh, growing downward into the United States. Uh, and eventually, uh, this again really just turns into a big bowling ball uh, that kind of works on through. And this is going to introduce the chances for severe weather, heavy rainfall, as well as uh, some cooler temperatures. And what eventually happens is a piece of that kind of breaks off. Uh, into next week and this trough axis extends all the way down almost near the Gulf Coast and again that is going to increase rain chances here through much of the southern and eastern half of the country as well as cooler temperatures so uh, that's something we're really going to be working uh, or looking um, forward to sorry um, here through the next couple of days. All right, let's talk about these uh, severe weather chances now through portions of the northern tier of the country. We'll start with this afternoon. Here we go, getting into this afternoon and evening. Again, rounds of storms through the northern tier uh, from much of Minnesota into portions of Wisconsin and the Dakotas. Main threat with these will be uh, strong straight line winds and a little bit of hail, but cannot rule out a brief isolated tornado, especially with these storms kind of in this region. Um, so, you know, we'll be watching out for that <clears throat> throughout the day today, throughout our Sunday. You'll notice really uh, picking up overnight tonight, 
um, and continuing to see those showers and storms. And by the time we're waking up tomorrow morning for our Sunday, if you're living in uh, Wisconsin or Michigan, uh, get prepared for some you know pretty feisty storms knocking on your doorstep for that Sunday morning commute. Uh, again, it could really be quite the wake-up call, and that's even going to try to make its way Sunday afternoon, potentially as far south and east as Ohio and Indiana. So don't be surprised. Uh, maybe some stronger storms, uh, you know, even working outside of that threat area we looked at uh, through portions, again, of um, those uh, states down near Ohio, Indiana, and uh, Michigan. Now, once again, uh, going into Sunday evening, more storms rolling on through. Again, it's just going to be round after round of storms through this region, through the Dakotas, through Minnesota, throughout the overnight Sunday, into Monday and Monday morning. Uh, once again, we're waking up to more storms, and these, again, could be producing isolated tornadoes. Again, these are kind of uh, almost isolated in nature, um, so you know we'll have to watch out for that. But again, all of this is just going to be kind of a wave of storms that keeps on working. This is something we see pretty often this time of year, uh, kind of that ring of fire effect, if you will, uh, as this continues working on you know through this part of the country. So. Uh, really, the easiest way to look at this is just any time now through kind of early next week, you could see severe storms if you're living in the Dakotas, uh, Minneapolis area, much of Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, any of these states, just be prepared, stay weather aware over the next couple of days. Uh, it's probably just the easiest way to look at this. Now, you know, moving this further ahead into time a little bit more, um, we'll start even uh, tomorrow afternoon is when we'll start this. These are severe weather uh, index, if you will, uh, or I guess not technically the sweat index, that's its own thing, but um, uh, this is just some severe weather ingredients thrown together. Sorry, my brain is not uh, fully working today yet. Um, but uh, if we take a look at these ingredients, again, tomorrow afternoon, you'll notice uh, really picking up, uh, you know, into portions of the Northern Plains. Uh, but I think really it's the start of next week that things really begin to pick up. And here we go. Uh, this is overnight Sunday into Monday, again, through much of Minnesota and surrounding states. Severe weather you know, threat really increases. But look at Monday afternoon uh, through Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Minnesota, Iowa, northern portions of Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. Uh, severe weather ingredients are there and in place. We need to watch for strong and severe storms Monday and even into Tuesday here. You'll notice those ingredients even shifting east a little bit. And by the time we're getting Tuesday into Wednesday, the northeast could be under the gun for some strong to severe storms. Uh, so really now through you know at least the middle of next week, maybe longer, we could be dealing with a severe weather threat uh, through much of the northern tier of the country, starting in the Dakotas and eventually getting all the way uh, into the northeast as this trough kind of swings on through. And even after that, I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple strong to severe storms maybe down into the Mid-Atlantic and the Carolinas uh, getting into later next week and into next week, and you'll notice some of those ingredients popping up. And uh, potentially, depending on how the pattern plays out, we could see a prolonged period of uh, storminess and potentially some embedded severe storms through much of the uh, southern part of the country and the eastern part of the country about a week or so out from now. All right, here's the exciting part. Here's the part I'm sure many of you are here for. Pattern change in store six to ten days from now. Check this out. Uh, big confidence growing from the uh, Weather Prediction Center or the Climate Prediction Center, rather, uh, that we're going to see a pattern shift with below average temperatures for much of the eastern half of the country six to ten days from now. So uh, getting closer and more confident that this is going to happen. Uh, and also some good news for those of you in drought in this part of the country. Generally, uh, excuse me, generally when we see um, cooler weather this time of year, that means rain is going to accompany it. And sure enough, rain chances also increasing for much of the southern and the eastern half of the country six to ten days out from now. So watching out for that pattern change. And again, all of this is due to this big trough swinging on through the country. Here it is Tuesday afternoon. Uh, you know, working on through the Midwest, eventually through the Northeast, and getting later on into next week. Again, this trough axis really digging down into the country, and potentially, if we're really lucky, uh, a piece of that could break off, and we could almost be dealing with an upper-level low uh, that just kind of parks itself over um, the east-central part of the United States here. Uh, going into next weekend and that would be the hope to kind of really prolong this cooler weather uh, and you know should that happen again we definitely could see prolonged periods of uh, cooler and stormier weather 
Now, overall nation view of this, uh, you know, kind of rain event, again, rainy through the Midwest the next couple of days, pop up storms on and off everywhere else. Uh, but once we get into the Tuesday time frame, this is when things really kind of begin to take off. Again, uh, storms working into the northeast as that trough swings on through could be strong to severe Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday afternoon. Uh, but watch what happens after that. Wednesday afternoon onward, much more widespread areas of storminess and cooler temperatures uh, overtaking the Ohio River Valley, uh, the Appalachia Chain area, and really the East Coast in general Wednesday onward. Uh, again, just rounds after rounds of storms on and off. Uh, and by the time we're getting into Friday here, look at this. This trough could really be working its way on through the country. We could get very widespread stormy weather in the southeast. Can't rule out maybe a couple strong to severe storms with that as well. Uh, in fact, I'm also going to pull up something else here on the fly that we'll look at next. Um, just because I'm curious myself. But uh, again, that storminess continues. Rainfall is going to be very beneficial for some areas that really need it, I think, here. And also, you know, we're going to get that cooler weather with the rain. All right, something else that I'm going to kind of pull up on the fly here are dew points. So uh, we'll take a look at this. This is a great measure of exactly how muggy it is out there. And uh, you'll notice overall pretty muggy for most of us going through this weekend, even into early next week. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens here. It kind of continues to stay muggy a bit, but there is the you know chance that um, that trough, as it works on through, could lead to some less muggy conditions, specifically in the northern tier of the country. I think further south, uh, this trough kind of might get stuck a little bit here uh, into portions of the mid south, which could you know continue to bring those muggy temperatures. Uh, but on the northern end, uh, this drier air with that low pressure may try to kind of dive on in. Uh, and uh, make things a little more pleasant through the Ohio River Valley northbound. Now, something else I'll note with a setup like this uh, is this is much like uh, what caused that flooding threat in eastern North Carolina a couple days ago. We had a very similar scenario, kind of a boundary that just set up and parked itself. Uh, so this could lead to you know very widespread stormy weather. I'll just go ahead and tell you now, uh, about a week or so out from now in this circled area, uh, you know, just be prepared. Uh, you know, you could be seeing, you know, the potential for maybe flooding as well if we get a situation like this. So we'll watch out for that. Um, but either way, the rain is much needed. So even if we have to fight a little bit of flooding with it, um, you know, that is that is probably a battle we are willing to take here. All right. The other good news is the temperature map. Uh, again, it's going to stay hot now through early next week. This is this coming Monday, still well above average temperatures. This coming Tuesday, well above average. Uh, but notice what happens going into later on this week. Uh, we've got temperatures 10 degrees, maybe isolated spots 15 degrees below what it should be this time of year. Uh, so if your average high is 95 uh, here in the middle of July, we could be looking at temperatures more like uh, 80, 85. So again, much nicer than uh, probably what we've seen the past couple of days. And again, especially in the northern tier here, uh, this could be you know accompanied by lower dew points and lower humidity. Uh, which is going to really make it feel nice. High temperatures in the 80s with dew points in the 50s. Uh, that's about as nice as you can ask for here for July. So we'll be watching for that. And again, these temperatures could hold on for a while to well below average, uh, or at least slightly below average uh, in the long term. So we'll be watching out for that and uh, keeping you updated on the latest here um, on the channel. So again, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. Like the video, please, and uh, comment. Let me know if you're looking forward to this cool down or if you're a fan of the summer temperatures. Uh, with all that said, though, have a great rest of your Saturday, and I'll see you all next time.